Shalom Aleichem Mishpocha, and may the perfect peace of Yahweh Shalom rest upon you. Uh, we're on location at the Flat Creek and the Palouse as it drops down into the Scablands and off the Palouse Falls, but I, I digress. We're studying the Word, and I'm in a book which is the secret book of the Egyptian Gnostics, which speaks about a find of books that were found in Mitzrayim. We've covered this in some other of my recordings, but in this particular book on uh, uh, page uh, 296, if that is any relevance at all, I'm going to start reading, and it, it is talking about the cave of Qumran, and uh, as I absolutely know the cave of Qumran as being Bet Araba, spoken of scriptures, how it is connected to the cave of Pela, the field of Ephraim that Abraham bought, and it being a place in the wilderness of Yada of Judea, and it is the place that Yochanan the Immerser was the chief librarian, the Ho the Kohen Hagadol, the true one. He was the one that was the son of Zechariah. He was the direct cousin of Yahusha through his mother Miriam. So that man of Qumran wrote those and kept that whole ancient library. So as we are looking through this, I'm seeing that this book is actually a book that is in very critical about any uh, books that they do not deem as canonical. So anyway, we're going to read this because this is what I found fascinating, and then I'm going to do the reading. So as I was reading on this page, as I ramble on, it says that as we know they did, and how they were from their faith, and from the discipline of life, and from their dress. And there's a footnote. And then it says, nor is it because the sec sec sectaries of Qumran made use of the books of Hanak and of Yevelim, Jubilees, nor that they possess a commentary on Bereshit Genesis. Incidentally, this was taken to be a book of Lamech footnote, which proves to be of little note from the doctrinal point of view. Rather, it is because they regarded as part of the teachings that they passed on as strictly secret. Was it then a kind of gnosis knowledge? He's pointing out these questions that I find really quite silly, as opposed to looking at text, not trying to discredit them, but actually seeing what they say, and realizing that silly translators like themselves that do not know the Kodesh name of Yahweh would change it to el p So. As I'm looking at this, there is a book of Lamech, huh, that there are fragments in the Qumran caves, as well as the Nag Hammadi and the Egyptian uh, libraries. So, I found them, at least some copies that are fragmented on the internet. And that's what we're going to be focusing on uh, as we finish up our whole series of uh, Before the Flood 
uh, documents that were written by Honeck, and I will keep adding as I find them, but this I'll let you take it at will, whether it is you're for or against. Let's just look at the text of what they say. They are fragmented, and I'm going to try to read through them, and maybe we can glean a bit of Hakma knowledge. Yay! Okay, we are looking at uh, everything that we can get our little fingers on about the Cave of Treasures, because they're literally treasures. So, we are going back to the first book of Adam Vachava Rishon, which is called the first book of Adam and Hava. And this starts out just three days after they were cast out of the Garden Adam. And it gives lots of descriptions and it introduces us to where they find themselves and how that relates to the next, uh, well, uh, few thousand years in time. So let's start uh, the Sefer Adam Vehava Rishon. Chapter 1. On the first day, Elohim planted the garden in the east of the earth, Eretz, on the border of the world eastward, beyond which, towards the rising sun, one finds nothing but water that encompasses the whole world and reaches to the borders of heaven, Shamaim, and to the north of the garden, there is a sea of water, clear and pure to the taste, unlike anything else, so that through the clearness thereof, one may look into the depths of the earth. And when a man washes himself in it, he becomes clean of the cleanness thereof, and white of the whiteness, even if he were dark. And Elohim created that sea of his own righteous pleasure. For he knew that what would come of the man he would make, so that after he had left the garden on account of his transgression, Men should be born in the earth. Among them are righteous ones who will die, whose souls Elohim would raise at the last day, when all of them will return to their flesh, bathe in the water of that sea, and repent of their transgressions, the iniquities, sins. But, when Elohim made Adam go out of the garden, he did not place him on the border of it northward. This was so that he and Haba would not be able to go near to the sea of water where they could wash themselves in it, be cleansed from their sins, erase the transgression they had committed and be no longer reminded of it in the thought of their punishment. As to the southern side of the garden, Elohim did not want Adam to live there either, because when the wind blew from the north, it would bring him on the southern side the delicious smell of the trees of the garden. Wherefore Elohim put, did not put Adam there. This was so that he would not be able to smell the sweet smell of those trees, forget his transgression, and find consolation for what he had done by taking delight in the smell of those trees, and yet not be cleansed from his transgression. Again, also, because Elohim, merciful and chesed, 
and of great pity that governs all things in a way that he alone knows. He made our father Adam live in the western border of the garden. Because on that side the earth is very broad. And Elohim commanded him to live in the cave in the rock, the cave of treasure below the garden. Adam and Hava faint when they leave the garden. Elohim sends his word to encourage them. Just going to do chapter 2 because we're just focusing in on the beginning, the introduction to the cave. Chapter 2. But when our father Adam and Hava went out of the garden, they walked on the ground on their feet, not knowing they were walking. And when they came to the opening of the gate of their the garden and saw the broad earth spread out before them, covered with stones large and small, and with sand, they feared and trembled, and fell on their faces from the fear that came over them, and they as they were dead. Because whereas until this time they had been in the garden land, beautiful, planted with all manner of trees, they now saw themselves in a strange land, which they knew not and had never seen. And because when they were in the garden, they were filled with the chesed, the grace of the bright nature, and they had not turned not hearts turned toward earthly things. Therefore, Elohim had pity on them, and when he saw them fallen before the gate of the garden, he sent his word to our father Abraham, Adam and Hava and raised them from their fallen state. Concerning the promises of the great five and a half days. Chapter 3 Elohim said to Adam, I have ordained on this earth days and years, and you and your descendants shall live and walk in them, until the days and years are fulfilled, when I shall send the word that created you, and again, when you have transgressed the word that made you come out of the garden, that raised you when you were fallen, yea, the word of that will again save you when the five and a half days are fulfilled. But when Adam heard these words from Elohim and of the great five and a half days, he did not understand the meaning of them. For Adam was thinking there would be only five and a half days for him until the end of the world. And Adam cried and prayed to Elohim to explain it to him. Then Elohim in his chesed, his mercy for Adam, who was made after his own image and likeness, explained to him that these were five thousand and five hundred years, and how one would then come and save him and his descendants. But before that Elohim may, had made this covenant with our father Adam, in the same terms before he came out of the garden, when he was by the tree where Hala took the fruit 
and gave it to him to eat. That was a fig. Because when our father Adam came out of the garden, he passed by that tree and saw how Elohim had changed the appearance of it into another form and how it shriveled the parable of the fig tree. And as Adam went to it, he feared, trembled, and fell down. But Elohim in his chesed lifted him up and then made this covenant with him. And again, when Adam was by the gate of the garden and saw the Keravim with the sword of flashing fire in his hand, and the Kerav knew, grew angry and frowned at him. Both Adam and Hava became afraid of him and thought he meant to put them to death. So they fell on their faces trembling with fear. But he had pity on them and showed him his chesed and turned from them, went up into the Shamaim and prayed to Yahweh and said, Yahweh, you sent me to watch at the gate of the garden with the sword of fire. But when your servants, Adam and Hava, saw me, they fell down on their faces and were as dead. O oh, my Adonai, what shall we do with your servants? Then Elohim had pity on them and showed them great hesed, and sent his Melech, his angel, to guard the garden. And the word of Yahweh came to Adam and Hava, and raised them up. And Yahweh said to Adam, I told you that at the end of five and a half days I will send my word and save you. Strengthen your hearts, therefore, and stay in the cave of treasure of which I have before spoken to you. And when Adam heard this word from Elohim, he was comforted with that which Elohim had told him, for he had told him how he would save him. Then it goes into how Adam mourns over the change conditions, and Adam and Hava enter the cave of treasures. Thank you for listening and uh, rightly dividing the word getting your shovels out and digging the treasures. We don't do it for greedy notions or like the scientists that just go do the grave robbing and loot the plunder. No, these treasures from these books are for the soul of man, of you, to have relationship with our Heavenly Father, to know His covenants and walk in his ways and we need to go back to the beginnings of these books because in prophecy they do tell the end we thank you for listening and we look forward to meeting with you next time if we don't see you in the future I'll definitely see you in the pasture shalom Shalom.